Oh. <laughs> Hi. You must be here for the video. Well, you're in luck because it's about shaders, and if you behave, there might even be a game for you to play at the end. I'm Leonard. Let's dive right into this episode of Useless Game Dev. Mobius, also known as Jean Giraud, was a French cartoonist and major figure of French comic book arts. And today we're going to try and replicate his drawing style when rendering real-time 3D. It is obviously never going to be as good as masterpieces drawn by an expert, but this is more of an experiment to see how far we can go. Regarding his style, Mobius had a lot of different phases throughout his career, but the style people associate with him most is this. Thin black outlines, flat colors, lots of details. Let's get started on the line and more specifically the outline. The line of Mobius' drawings has most of the time a fixed width, meaning it's probably all drawn with the same pen. If I draw the line directly on a 3D object using a regular texture, the perspective is going to make it uneven and pixelated up close, so there must be a screen space filter to keep everything at the same size. To do this, we're first going to need an edge detection filter in the form of a Sobel filter, which is a kind of convolution filter. Uh, let me explain. In a convolution filter, for every pixel on the screen, the result of the filter will be a weighted sum of the values of the neighboring pixels. To do this, you sample the pixels around the target pixel and multiply the values according to a weight matrix. If the weights are just a simple average, we get a simple blur. If the weights are Gaussian weights, we get Gaussian blur. This is the weight matrix for the Sobel filter. As you may already be able to tell, the resulting sum will highlight the differences between the left and the right sides of the pixel. If the values are same-ish, the filtered pixel will be dark. If, however, there is a high contrast between the two sides, the filtered pixel would be much brighter. If we test this on a sample image, we see that the Sobel filter highlights vertical edges. We just have to add a second similar filter that highlights horizontal edges, and by taking the maximal value of both, we get a pretty nice edge detection filter. In a 3D scene, we will apply the Sobel filter on the depth map. This way, when an object is far behind another, there will be a sudden change in depth and voila, outlines. Something that also has sudden changes along the edges of an object is the normal map of the scene. So we can also apply the Sobel filter to the normal buffer and we get even better edges. Now it's all supposed to be hand drawn after all, so I'm going to add a slight noise to the UV sampling in order to get wiggly lines. Nope, that's too much. Perfect. It's already looking quite good, although for some reason when I zoom on this fern I can gaze into the interdimensional void. Let's add texture to our objects. There's a lot of details we want to draw on our objects, and once again, if we draw them directly on the object, the perspective is going to make the line uneven. So my idea was to write the texture information to the normal buffer. After all, we are not really going to apply any traditional lighting to the scene, and the normals will get caught and outlined by our Sobel filter. The only issue with this is that when you draw a single line on a normal texture, it will actually get outlined by the Sobel filter. And even if you draw the thinnest lines, when you look up close, it doesn't look great. But let's simply not look too closely at objects, and this will be a little secret. Also, we don't want to get too close and risk falling into the void. In Mobius' drawing, lighting is mostly conveyed via the line itself. So you will have bright colors, we'll get to those in a moment, and the shading is going to be done using cross-hatched lines. To achieve this, I prepared this special texture with three dimensions of cross-hatching. Horizontal, vertical, and sideways. Each of these layers write independently to the red, green, and blue channels of the texture respectively, which, once in unity, gives me basically three textures in one. Pretty neat. With this, I can add the crosshatch depending on the brightness of a pixel. If it's between 100 and 75% brightness, no crosshatch. Between 75% and 50%, only horizontal lines. 
between 50% and 25% horizontal and vertical, and finally between 25% and zero, all three types of lines. The shadow graph for this is pretty simple too. In an ideal world, the crosshatch pattern would follow the curve of the object it's on. This is how it should be drawn to convey volume. For the shady part of objects, this can be done by adding the crosshatch to the normal buffer, just like we do with texture. It works somewhat, but since it goes through the Sobel filter, the quality ends up being meh. For shadows, however, while it might probably be feasible, uh, not by me. So we're going to stick with screen space crosshatch for now. We're almost done with the line component of our shader. The last thing we need is to show specular reflections. In Mobius's drawing, this is done with very distinct white areas that are outlined as well. With a simple dot product between the normal of a surface and the direction of the main light of the scene, we can get the area of the object that is most exposed to light and write that as a special color in our object's normal map so it's caught by the Sobel filter. The line looks alright, it handles our 3D scene pretty well. It definitely doesn't look as detailed as it should be, but that would require me having some actual drawing skills, so... No, let's move on to color. Objects are simple, they have either a single color, maybe a fancy schmancy gradient, and same thing for the skybox. Also, since the crosshatch line thing is taking care of the brightness component of colors, all colors can be at full brightness. It's all a bit too colorful now, so we'll add post-processing effects to tweak saturation, contrast and other color adjustments. Also throw in some grain to look a bit more like paper. I'm not a fan of Unity's built-in film grain, because it moves a lot like the image has white noise or something, so I made my own grain that only changes every 10 frames or so, to mimic the low frame rate of old films. Our shader looks like it's ready in our sample scene. So let's take her out for a spin in a small racing game I made, dubbed Monroe Grand Prix. It's a tiny racing game, very simple, go through the hoops to complete a lap, 3 laps total, fastest wins. It's available for you to play on itch.io, link in the description, so go for it. This is my current best score, comment below if you can beat it. Until then, have a good one!